I've been collecting games all my life. Let me rephrase that. I've been buying games my entire life. I started out buying physical games because that was the only option I ever had. Around 2012, 2016, digital games started popping off and it became the more convenient way to buy games. Or maybe I just didn't want to get off the couch, swap out the disc anymore. I don't know. Honestly, that might be a bigger factor than getting rid of physical games in general. Well, my mindset around physical and digital games has kind of changed lately. I'm not gonna say I no longer buy digital games because I definitely still do, but something's kind of pulled me back into wanting to buy physical games. And so I thought it would be a good time to talk about it, physical games versus digital games. And some of the reasons why I think physical games might make a bit more sense. Let's be upfront about it. Digital games have no resale value. You might be able to get the game on a steep discount because maybe you don't have any more storage space on your shelf or whatever the reason is, after you beat the game and haven't touched it in a few years, you can't really do anything with that copy of the game that you bought. And even some storefronts have said that you can't transfer your digital game library, even if it's in your will. That's pretty crazy. Not that I think you should be able to or shouldn't, but just the fact that like you, you literally cannot transfer these things. That's just wild to me. And even if you did get the game on a steep discount, it probably took a long time for it to hit that price. And that's where I think physical games walk into the picture. When I was a kid, I remember having to get creative about how I bought games. I didn't make any money like many other kids. So how was I going to buy a new game when it released? It was like 50, 60, 70 dollars, whatever it was. Well, I had to pull together some of my old games and go to GameStop. Sometimes I do like a bring two of your used games in and we'll give you like an extra 40 percent, whatever it was. But that was how I only spent five dollars to get the newest Resident Evil game. And yes, I'm not condoning GameStop's shitty behavior about giving you 20 cents for your game that released six months ago. That sucks. I totally get it. And physical games not only have instant value, but if you hold on to this game for a few years or decades, the game might just double in price. I have a game, Metal Gear Solid Twin Snakes, that released on the GameCube back in like the early 2000s or whatever. And right now it's going for well above $120 on eBay, which is crazy because I'm pretty sure I got that game for like $40. So yes, in a way, physical games are better than digital games because, well, you can make some money on it. And that's even before we get into the topic about like losing your digital libraries in general, not even if it's in your will, but like if like they just take it offline. So if you want to hear more about that, I did make another video on that so i will go ahead and link it in the description next i want to talk about how buying physical games does not tie you into a single ecosystem i see a lot of discourse about getting locked into like one single ecosystem whether it's xbox nintendo playstation pc whatever it is and this topic even goes further than video games think of apple products i use apple products myself the iphone the watch you know the macbook the airpods and, and probably some other things i love the way they all work and integrate together seamlessly but that does come at a cost even if I like the products. It means that if I were ever to get an Android phone or a Windows laptop, some of my devices wouldn't work properly anymore. They would lose a ton of features unless I just kept my Apple products. And that does kind of suck because it does make you want to stay in that ecosystem. And the same thing goes for gaming. If you have a PC or one of the consoles, all of your digital games that you own are tied to the account that you bought them on. So for example, if you think of the Nintendo Switch, well, you can't take those games with you to the Xbox platform or PC. And you if you bought them digitally, you can't sell them to make up the money that you're about to lose if you sell that device. You kind of just have to eat the cost. If all of your games are physical, you can go ahead and make some of that money back or at least get pretty close to it. You're able to sell your device, sell the game, maybe sell some controllers and accessories and putting some money back into your pocket to go ahead and buy the newer console or whatever else you're trying to sell it for. Maybe you're just moving out to a new house. At least you made some money back. And something I think that goes unsaid a lot with physical games versus digital games is being able to see them. Visualization. This is something I didn't realize that I missed until I took a slow look around my apartment during the pandemic. And I was like, where's all my games? And then it hit me. I've been buying most of my games digitally the last few years, and I don't have any new games. Like the latest game I had was like FIFA 14 or something. So I booted up my console and I went through my digital library, slowly realizing that I didn't know if I bought these games myself or if they were from like the free game of the month. And I just didn't like the experience about browsing through my digital library. I just, there was just no feelings involved whatsoever. It just felt so soulless. So I made the decision to start buying some physical games, not all games, but just some games, some games that would feel important to buy games like 
God of War, Sekiro, Death Stranding. And I would keep the digital games to like sports titles like FIFA or maybe like multiplayer games, in my personal opinion, would be less important. And now not only am I able to display them in my apartment, but I'm able to see the games that I bought and I have them displayed on my shelf. I'm able to see the games I've already played and, you know, think of those memories. But it also reminds me about the games I still need to play, like Days Gone, for example. But I do like the little point about where it brings you back to a game, you know, where you were when you were playing it. I always think about Last of Us Part Two and how just after absolutely insane that was. I think having material items in your house is important. And it kind of goes hand in hand with how vinyls are being sold lately. I, I just feel like one of these days we're going to be like, we really wish we held on to physical media because no longer have it anymore, which is another reason why I still buy physical movies. Maybe I'm just, maybe I'm just a boom. At the end of the day, you're going to have to make this decision for yourself. Digital games versus physical games. Look, I'm not trying to change anyone's mind. I'm just trying to give you my own perspective on the matter. And in fact, I'd say like one last thing to people is just Buy the game where it's the cheapest, where it's the most affordable for you. Because being able to play the game, but maybe also have some food to eat, is always going to be the best option available. So anyways, let me know in the comments below if you buy physical games or if you prefer digital games. Maybe you've been buying digital for like the past 10 years, you just like never see yourself going back. Totally understandable. Maybe you're a physical purist and maybe you only buy games that are, you know, released physically. And I know some games aren't even getting physical releases anymore. So what do you think about those? Or or maybe you have a huge physical library and I'd like to hear about it. So go ahead and leave me a comment. And I'll go ahead and read them and uh, respond. Anyways, I'm going to head out of here. Peace.